Hello everyone! Are you all ready to go flying today? Oh, I am so glad to hear that, because so am I. Yes, I want to go flying today, and I have an interesting flight today. Now, for a little while I've been over in the Americas, as you know, but this week I had a message from a YouTuber by the name of Cletus, Cletus, and he wrote, perhaps a flight to Israel could be added to the queue. Wow, well of course it could. Now, we finally got our way through that queue and we are down to that week where we are going to fly to Israel. Now, he didn't uh, specify a starting point so I went ahead and put in Larnaca in Cyprus as my starting point. And we'll go to um, Tel Aviv, Ben Gurion Airport from there. Sound good? Oh, I'm so glad you agree. It's a nice flight. It's a short flight. And I have some excellent airport sceneries for both places. Now, Larnaca LC LK airport scenery is made by Just Sim, Just Sim. And Tel Aviv LLBG, that's for Ben Gurion, of course, airport scenery is made by Aerosoft. And we're going to follow an interesting flight called Wizz Air. Now, I've been in and out of Ben Gurion Airport several times, as a matter of fact. And of course, in recent decades, I've been flying commercially. And uh, the last one I went in with was Swiss Air. That was the last flight I made into Ben Gurion Airport. But I've traveled on all kinds of others, including El Al, of course, the national airline, and British Air, and a couple of others as well. But I did enjoy that Swiss Air flight very much. Well, today we're going to be going Wizz Air. And that is a very different airline. And they've picked up and they are building quite a fleet. Enough to even uh, make Mr. O'Leary at Ryanair a little bit uh, nervous, shall we say. <laughs> so... That's what we'll do today. So it's going to be Larnaca LCLK to Tel Aviv LLBG. Okay, Cletus, if you're ready, we need to go into pre flight and check the weather and the wind directions and look at a previous flight as well as make a flight plan. So if you're ready to do that, let's go into pre flight. So here we are in Flight Aware and we're looking at Wizz Air Flight 4605. I looked at several flights that made the journey between the two points and Wizz Air was the most interesting one, so I picked it. Here you can see the designated W6 and then 4605 or the WZZ4605, either one of those uh, designators will bring up this page. Here you can see the flight departed from Larnaca in Cyprus and landed at Tel Aviv in Israel at Ben Gurion. It departed on time but was 25 minutes late in arriving. Got no idea why that should be, but this was two hours and 45 minutes ago, so we are following 
a very recent flight indeed. And here it looks like this was their route and possibly I think I can spot this looks like the reason for the delay. They went into a holding pattern here perhaps because uh, there was not a slot available for people going into Tel Aviv because that is a very busy airport there. So let's look. They flew at 23,000 feet, so we will do exactly the same. All right, let's go into windy. Let's look at the wind conditions. Well, here you can see it's quite, quite changeable in the area. Here the wind is blowing a little bit from the south, it seems. Wind 180, 10 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, clouds scattered at 2,500, a few at 3,000 feet. Oh, and there are some towering cumulus in the area. Temperature is a warm 27 degrees. My goodness, when I got up this morning, it was five degrees outside here in England. And even now, it's only just managed to warm up to 12 degrees. I feel like I should be out there sunbathing with that. Anyway, Q&H is 1015. That's only two points above the standard. And look at this. It's all VFR, so no issues. Looking at the runway, well, if it's blowing from the south, I'm sure that we'll be taking off in the north to south direction then. We'll be departing then on runway 22. That is my bet. And here it is. There's runway 22. But here's the awkward thing. When I checked with Flight Radar 24 and looked at the origin of the uh, flights, the Wizz Air flights, they tend to park at one of these stands right here. So that is a long way to have to taxi to get to the active to take off. So taxi time is going to be an issue for us. Now here's Tel Aviv. Here you can see the wind is blowing directly from the west, going straight into Tel Aviv right there. And having a look, wind 270 degrees, 10 knots, still the same speed. Visibility 10 kilometers or more, clouds few at 4,000 feet. No towering cumulonimbus at this area. Uh, temperature 27, nice and warm. Q&H 1015, same pressure. And looking at the runways, well, I would think that we would then be coming in to land on this runway right here, runway 26. That's my, that's my best guess, runway 26. And where do they tie up? Well, again, I looked on Flight Radar 24, and they came in to this particular uh, pier right here. So they're at one of these stands. So we will do exactly the same as the Wizz Air flight did. All right, let's go then into Simbrief. We are, of course, Ryanair, and we are 186. And we are departing from LCLK. LCLK. And going to LLBG. LLER is the alternate. We'll look at that in a moment. Here's our airframe with all of the engines and everything else built into it for Simbrief to be able to calculate our fuel. Cruise profile is six. Registration is EIENI. Schedule flight time, block time, that's gate to gate, is one hour, 10 minutes. Departure is runway 22. And arrival runway 30. Well, that's interesting. I would not have thought that. Well, 
and of course we're going to be flying at 230 to match the others we're going to be full and yet we will have one ton of do you know what it is of course you do it's champagne and caviar Down here is the route, and the route distance is a mere 202 nautical miles. Having a look here, here you can see the flight route coming down and then coming into Tel Aviv like that. And the alternate down here is Ilan and Asaf Ramon Alternate Airport and the elevation is 288 feet and here's the current information so that will be our alternate airport should something go horribly wrong all right we'll go up here and we'll save the flight and we'll generate the flight plan and here's the flight plan summary uh, there's the origin, destination, alternate, there's our cruise. Airtime is 53 minutes, block fuel 6,349 kilograms. There is our routing, no dispatcher remarks. And going down here, we are Ryanair 186. The F230 is the cruising altitude. Here is the route. LLER is our alternate, should things go pear-shaped. We'll need to know cost index six. Average wind, of course, is 233 and 32 knots. Down here, here's our block fuel that we'll need. Reserves 3,134, that's 3.1 metric tons trip and taxi 2558 kilograms required there but no tankering recommended here's the route if this is the one that we actually f make then that is the one i'll put in the description box below this video we'll need to go and check out the descent We'll need the descent information for flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet, for flight level 150, which is 15,000 feet, and for flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. Here is the wind information for flight level 240, which is 1,000 feet above us. And here you can see the wind is pretty much going to be uh, from the side. We'll have a, a crosswind uh, flight all the way with all of those winds hitting us from the side and some fairly strong ones at, uh, at a certain point here. Until we get here then we have a little bit of a tailwind for this little leg until we have to swing around and go into Tel Aviv. And here is the vertical profile. We start out here at Larnaca Climb up to top of climb here, go across top of descent, and then straight down here into Ben Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv. Pretty straightforward. All right, let's go into Navigraph charts and pull, build our chart list. Well, we click on flights, we click new flights from SimBrief and we bring the one in that we just made. Start out in Larnaca, opening up the charts list. We're going to need airport information and we will need the parking stands for our beginning here. We'll be at one of these. And here are the coordinates below us. So we'll have all of the information that we need. It's calling for this for the departure so we'll pin that to the bottom now we'll go over to our destination 
open that up. We need the airport information and then we need the parking stands which I'll pin here because we'll be planning to come in on one of these right here. That's the plan. It's talking about runway 30. So I'm going to put in ILS runway 30 and let's look at the the chart there. See it's having us coming in at that one which means that we'll be coming in from Limpo and then down here and then making our approach that way. That seems to be the standard approach for this. Let's look here at the arrival. Fairly straightforward. Okay, we'll we'll pin that to the bottom and then going back to this one. If we're coming in on ILS runway from Lemco, then we'll put that in there. And as you can see, it builds the entire route for us so that we'll just swing around and come in for a final on that doesn't matter whether it's this one or that one because we need to end up just about there anyway. So let me just close all these parts down and let's have an another look at this. There's the arrival ATIS. We'll need to have this information. We need the tower frequency. Localizer 111.9, final approach course 296. Decision height is 330, which is uh, 100 and 200 feet above the runway because the airport elevation is 134, but the runway is 130. So you add 130 to 200 and it comes up with, that's right, 330. On a missed approach, initial climb is 3,000 feet, climb on 296, maximum of 185 knots, at or above 700 feet, turn left, but not before DER 30. Then direct to BG 050 and continue on track. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. So we will need to have the 111.9 put into our NAV1 and the 113.5 for the Ben Gurion VOR put into our NAV2 frequency. Now, LIMCO is the initial approach fix. And then right here, it looks like Moshe is the intermediate fix, which is just before we enter onto final. So at Moshi, we need to be at 3,700 feet. Then we descend to 3,200 uh, by the time we get to the D8.7, which is right there. There's the waypoint. And then it's straight down the glide slope to land on runway 30 at that. And it's saying 185 nautical miles and now is the max speed. Right, we have all the information that we need. So let's uh, close this. And there's the flight plan. Everything is working. Right. Well, if you're ready, Cletus, let's go into the cockpit and get ourselves started and get everything set up in Larnaca in the lovely island of Cyprus. Ah, uh, there you are, Cletus. Do come on in and take your seat. Don't forget, buckle up and let's see where we are. We are here in the beautiful airport of Larnaca on the island of Cyprus. And it is a beautiful day, but there are some rumblings in the sky outside. So there are some thunderstorms in the vicinity that we may have to contend with. If you remember, 
It did talk about towering cumulonimbus buildups in the area when we checked the weather. So uh, we have some interesting flight ahead of us, I think. Now, I did the research as best I could and I checked out that the previous flight, which landed only a couple of hours or so ago, took off from stand 23. Best I could come up with is stand 23. So we're here, stand 23, in exactly the same location. Let me show you this beautiful airport scenery, which is made by JustSim. JustSim is the one who makes this scenery. And here you can see the view out to the side. We're at that little, well, not little, but we're at the main airport terminal. And we are at the base of it. Now this is the extension piece. This is the pier that goes out from it. And that we're going to have to go in that direction in order to get to the active runway. But beautiful detail, don't you think? Really is absolutely superb. They've done a, a beautiful job of this at Just Sim. And I'm using three large monitors, all set, each one set to UHD or 4K. And the frame rate is 35, 36. How about that? Really very, very good frame rate, given all of the detail. So that's where we're at. Right. Now, I've been around and I've checked all the air in the tires and made sure that they're properly inflated and gave them a good kick too. I've washed and waxed the entire outside of the aircraft. Aren't I good? And of course, I did wash the windows, although my suspicion is we may get... Uh, some rain, in which case I will get rain spots on there. And I hate getting rain spots on such clear, clear glass like that. <laughs> and I've also loaded up with fuel. We have 6,349 kilograms of fuel on board. So we are ready now to get ourselves started. So here's what we do. We Turn on the battery switch. We make sure we have enough volts. Turn on the fuel pumps because we want to start the APU. And there's the start switch. And ah, there the low oil pressure light has come on. Now I'm looking for this to start to climb. That's the engine gas temperature of the engine that's in the tail of the aircraft. There it goes. By the way, this is the forward overhead and it's made, it's a one-to-one -one actual re replica of the real one and it's made by open cockpits. But look at how smooth everything is. And all the switches work, everything works. Now in a moment it should come down and stabilize and when it does, I'm looking for this light to turn on and when it does then I will switch there it is. Now, if we look up here, I've got the switch saying that we want to show the voltage coming from the APU generator, and it says we now have 115. So we have all the voltage we need now to program everything we in the cockpit. So, turning on now the IRS, get that all done. Turn on the galley. You never know. We may just get a cup of tea. I wonder what they are doing back there anyway. And then emergency exit lights. No smoking. Fasten seatbelt. Over here, I'm turning on the left and the right window heat. I'm leaving the probes off for the moment. And then I'm turning on the electrical hydraulic pumps. Over here, the forward service hatch light is on and the equipment light is on because outside the air stairs are down and the door is open and as you can see our self-loading cargo is getting themselves ready to board so we have to get ourselves cracking here 
And then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, the recirculating fans, the packs, and listen. There's that rush of air going into the aircraft cabin to cool it down because right outside it is 26 degrees and with the sun beating down on the top of the aircraft it has made it stuffy inside so this is a way of cooling it down and then the last thing I'm going to do is turn on the steady light so that the ground crews know that we are in here and we're getting ourselves ready to go right now we're ready to program the FMC so over here we check that we have the current air rack in date there's no errors with the program and we press the initialization and of course our start point is LCLK so LCLK and we are at gate 23 so 23 and there it is it comes right up with the exact location the jib the location right there so I put that into the temporary and transfer it to that now our GPS system knows our starting point go to route and we put in the start again LCLK LCLK and we're going to go to LLBG and we are of course Ryanair 1 uh, and 186 now we go to next page and here we put in our route first one is a meter so E M E D A then we go to Tuzib T U Z I B Then we go to Zucko, Z-U-K-K-O, and then we go to, that's it, after that, so we then activate, execute. Now we go to fix, and we want to put in LLBG, which is our destination airport, and we need a four mile circle around the airport a 10 mile circle and a 30 mile circle go to descent go to forecast now for transition the transition level is flight level 200 so I'm going to put in 200 up there and then we need the information for flight level 200 150 and 100 and the Q&H at our destination is 1015 and then the information for flight level 200 the wind speed and direction is 233 at 36 233 at 36 and at 150 it is 232 also at 36 and at 10,000 feet it is 215 at 30 and then we execute that go to departures and arrivals go to departure we're pretty sure we're departing from 22 but first of all we need to listen in to ATIS just to find out what the current conditions are at the airport and the frequency of ATIS is 126 decimal five five so one two six decimal five five Larnaca International Airport Information Alpha Zero Niner Five One Zulu Wind One Seven Five at Niner Visibility Greater than twenty miles Sky Condition Two Thousand Five Hundred Scatter Few Clouds at Three Thousand Temperature Two Six Dew Point Altimeter One Eight One Zero One Five Landing and departing runway 2 2 BFR aircraft say direction of flight All aircraft read back hold short instructions Advise controller on initial contact you have Alpha Right we have Alpha And it is runway 2 2 And it is VFR 
few clouds at 3,000 feet and temperature is 26, altimeter 1015. So 1015 goes in there. And while I'm at that one, I'm also going to put in the decision height of 330. And the decision height, of course, when we get to 330, it will come up and say minimums, minimums, let us know. Okay. Now, we know we're leaving from runway 22, so I'm going to put 22 in there. And we're going to be using the uh, Emida 1 Delta. So the Emida 1 Delta right there. Execute that. Departures and arrivals. Go to arrivals. We are planning to come in on runway 30. ILS runway 30. We'll be using the... Ninet 1 arrival so there's the Ninet 1 arrival and it is the Lemco transition so we execute that now we go to legs and here's where we're going to check out the route and make sure everything is good I'm going to turn this switch here to plan and then it turns everything into this screen on here. Now I'm just going to step through each of these just to see how it looks. And here's all of the information. There's Zucco coming in, Ninette, and coming on. There's the 10 mile circle. There's, oh no, that's the 30 miles. That's the 10 mile circle. That's the 4 mile circle that we put in. And coming down, Limco uh, coming down on that one and then it's going around and there's Moshi coming in and that brings us right in to a landing on runway 30. Easy peasy, eh? Now I'm going to switch back to the screen. I'm going to select 20 for the range, put on the weather double click and put on the data switch and then that will get us going on that on your side I'm going to put terrain double click for data so that we can see any mountains that may come in our in our direction now I'm going to turn on the TCAS so that we can be seen and that we can see others that are in the vicinity on our screen here. And we do have one aircraft probably at the other side of this building here. Now since we're going to be departing on runway 22, that heading then is 220 degrees. So I'm going to turn this to 220 degrees. And this one to 220. And I'll do yours if that's okay, Cleesus. 220 on this one for you. Now, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put in 23,000 feet up on here because this is our cruising altitude. And the elevation at our destination is 134. Well, that's near enough to 150 because these are in increments of 50 feet. So that way, that's the landing altitude. So this is for our pressurization en route. Now I'm going to request our IFR clearance. Larnaca ground, Ryanair 186, IFR2, Ben Gurion, ready to copy. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Zulu Uniform Kila Kila Oscar Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain 11000 departure frequency is 121.2 squawk 2612 Ryanair 186 cleared to Zulu Uniform Kilo Kilo Oscar Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain 11000 departure on 121.2 squawk 2612 Ryanair 186 Redback is correct Contact ground on 119.4 when ready to taxi. Okay, 
Well, uh, crew, everybody is ready on board, so I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the doors. And look at the way these stairs fold up. Isn't that interesting? And they come up so easily. That's the electric motor that brings it in and stores it in a cavity that's underneath the forward hatch. And it's just that easy. Really interesting how that's done. Okay, now I'm going to request the taxi to the uh, active. Larnaca ground, Ryanair 186 with Alpha ready to taxi by FR. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 22 using taxiway Lima Bravo Lima Zulu Charlie Alpha contact tower on 120.575 when ready. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 22 via taxiway Lima Bravo Lima Zulu Charlie Alpha Ryanair 186. Right, we have our departure. I'm looking here at the uh, screen to see the the pattern so there's the Lima all the way there and then there's the Charlie all the way across apron 2 and then Alpha to the end of that right we have we've got that okay now we need to go into route and we need to perform the initialization The reserves are 3,134. Uh, the trip and taxi is 2,558. That comes to 5,692 or 5.7. So I'm going to put 5.7. And that's our planned fuel. The reserves is 3,134. So that is 3.1. 3.1. Cost index is 6. Our cruising altitude is 230. The average wind is 233 at 32. Now, transition altitude is 180, flight level 180, 18,000 feet. And I'm going to now double click the zero fuel weight and it calculates everything for me. Execute that, go to N1 limit. I'm going to accept the 26 degrees on here. I'm not going to bother with D rates or bumps. I am going to be using flaps 10. I'll double click this and it gives me the center of gravity and the value of the trim wheel down here. One click on each of these gives me B1 of 134, rotate speed of 135, B2 of 146. So now I'm going to put 146 in here. We are cleared to 11,000 feet, so I'm going to put 11,000 feet in here. Right, now I'm going to put the flight director on here, flight director on there, V nav button, L nav button, and look at that, we have green lights. And arm the throttle, VOR 1 is on, VOR 2. VOR1, VOR2. Now VOR1, this is NAV1, that's the localizer at Ben Gurion. VOR2, that's NAV2, and that's the frequency of the Ben Gurion VOR. And it's on both sides, so we have redundancy. Okay, now I'm going to do the check. Oh, I'm going to turn on the your damper flight continuity went out. So, fuel is on board, windows locked, seatbelt signs are on, yes, door lights are out, MCP is correct, thrust bugs all programmed, speeds are all good, CDU pre-flight, rather air alarm trim free, taxi and takeoff briefing, we need to push back our nose to the right and our tail to the left. Anti-collision light, that is now going on. Orbit 4958, request taxi to the gate. Now the big question is, is which engine would you like to start first? Number one on the left or number two on the right? Or you'd like to start number two first? We can do that. In order to do that, then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to switch this to generator two. 
Of course, it says zero right now because the engines aren't running, but at least it's now all set. So now I'm going to ask the nice people on the ground to give us a pushback. And so are you ready? Is everything set? Everything looking good? Okay, turning nose to the right, we are set. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback. Tail to the left. Release parking brake, please. Parking brake is released, and I'm now turning off the heat because we want the compression to go to the engines to do the spinning. So, as soon as they start the pushback, I'm going to turn this to start the engines. Actually, here we go. All right, clicking over to that, and now over here you can see the start valve has opened, and the compressed air is spinning those engines. This is the N2. When that gets to 24, then I'm going to introduce the fuel. And it's coming up. There we go. Introducing the fuel. I'm now looking for the engine gas temperature to ignite. And there it is. Look at it rising beautifully, cooking. And over here, I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it just did. We should be able to hear the engines. There, there's that rumble. We have, and I'm looking up here now to check. We've got 115 volts, switching now to engine number one, turning engine one on. Start valve has opened, and the N2 is climbing. Coming up very nicely. When it gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. Parking brake is set and fuel going in. Brake set. Now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature to pick up. Good, it's ignited. Low oil pressure light to go out. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the salute release from guidance on your right. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. Aren't they such nice people on the ground to do that for us? Hmm. And it's coming along very nicely. And the engines have ignited, so looking up here now for 115 volts. There we have it. Now I'm just looking for that tick mark to go off to say that then it has. Now both engines and generators are stable, so I'm going to switch to the main engines for generators. Turn on the heat again, turn off the APU and turn off the APU there. All right. Now, generators, of course, are on. Probe heat is now going on, left and right. Anti-ice not required at the moment. Acceleration valve is good. Start levers idle D10. Flight deck door is closed and locked. And recall is good. Flight controls are checked. Flaps. I'm now going to go to flaps 10. And you can see that there is some cloud in the area. We are under shade at the moment, so we may get some storms. We'll have to see. And flaps are extending. We have green light. Stabilizer trim is good. Auto brake is set for RTO. Speed brake lever is down the tent. And ground equipment is all clear. So we are all set to move, verify the takeoff speeds, and no changes there. So everything is looking good. So I'm turning on the taxi lights. Attendance, we are getting ready to taxi to the active. Okay, and it's a little bit of a, a trundle to do this, but we go down there turn left and all the way to the end so are you ready you're all set okay then here we go break off give ourselves a boost of power 
and we got ourselves moving. Okay. Now we'll move over here to the yellow line that we can straddle. Beautiful scenery here. If I get a chance for a different from a different perspective, I'll get a video of this. Frame rate now is 46, 47. So we're doing exceptionally well for frame rate. Very well indeed. out onto this coming one. Alright, everything is looking good. Everything is clear. Don't have much traffic today, so we're very, very fortunate. Sign directly ahead of us points that way to runway 22, so we're doing very well on that. And everything is clear. Okay, I'm just going to stop here and I'm going to play tourist. I hope the tower doesn't uh, give me any problems with that. Anyway, there you can see the main terminal, and we were at the other side of that parked aircraft. Look at that, look at the detail. They really have done a great job with the detail in making this airport scenery. And this, of course, is the Larnaca LCLK airport scenery, and made by Just Sim. Just Sim. And that's looking out towards the Mediterranean. Lots of lovely detail. Alright, let's get ourselves to the end of the active runway before the tower gives us a ticket for loitering. We don't want that, do we? I'm using Active Sky for generating my weather. So it is uh, giving me quite a bit of good detail there. There are vehicles scurrying about over there. But fortunately, I've not encountered any kamikazes which is a, a pleasant change, I think. You can see on the screen on your right where we are and where we're going. Control tower is there on the left. And the Emergency fire equipment is also there on the left. Larnaca's also got a beautiful harbor here. And you can see cranes that they use for loading and unloading cargo ships over there. Beautiful scenery. We are now, of course, well into autumn in England and getting ready to be in winter for not too long. And uh, but here, here they don't know winter as we know winter. So it's really rather nice here. Oh, 
I spoke too soon. There's a kamikaze coming straight for us. Oi, up it. Go on, buzz off. Clear off. Look at him. Paying absolutely no attention to us at all. My goodness me, look at that. I'll get your number. We should report him, you know. Well, and I thought that we were going to escape the kamikazes, but oh well. And there's another one. Oh my. We really do. We must have a bullseye painted on our fuselage. Don't you even think about it. Don't think about it now. Look at that. You see this? Look at that. Pays absolutely no attention. Boom. This is the old Larnica terminal right here. This is where flights used to come in and out of until they built the new one down there. Now this is basically, I think, cargo. And this is apron two. This is for general aircraft parking. This is where all the uh, posh people come in and out of, you know. The ones that don't bother with such quaint things as customs and immigration. They just come in in their posh jets and park here and off they go in their limousines. You know, we should try that sometime. That, that should be fun. I mean, after all, you know, we are VIPs. Looks like uh, air sea rescue aircraft right there. Right, we're coming up to the end of the runway now, and as soon as we make our turn and get to the whole short line, we'll do our checklist and get a clearance to take off. Tower frequency is 120.57. Alright, making our turn here. Request takeoff clearance. Larnica Tower, Ryan Air 186, Sat Runway 22, ready for takeoff by FR2 Zulu Uniform Kilo Kilo Oscar. Ryan Air 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 22. Cleared for takeoff, runway 22, Ryan Air 186. We are cleared for takeoff, so all lights are going on. Engine start switches are now on. Position is now going to strobe and steady. And I'm starting the clock. So we are, takeoff briefing is correct. Engine bleeds are on. Engine start switch is continuous. Cabin is secure. We are ready for takeoff, ladies and gentlemen. Please make sure that you are ready. Oh, and over there, I should do this.
This is one of those delightful features, but out there, if you can see it, we have dolphins jumping in and out, out of the water right there. How about that? Remarkable, beautiful detail. Okay, let's move ourselves out onto the active runway. Nothing coming, we're all clear. going to N1 and good power toga button pushed and we are now rolling Rotate. V2. V2. Positive rate. Gear up. We're going to going off. Going to flaps five. Line air one eight six. Acknowledge last transmission. One two one point two. Line air one eight six. Right, we're on our way. And now, looking good. Line of Cloud Tower, Pacific Cloud 4701, ready to go, runway 22852, under ready. Pacific Cloud 4701. Engines are off. Pax auto check. Landing gear up, no lights, and flaps are now up. And counting meters are all set. Well, we're over the Mediterranean and we're swinging over, leaving the island of Cyprus behind us and we're already into cloud. Well, what do you know? But, looking over here, we have started to pick up the Ben Gurion VOR and there it is, it's showing right at this point and it is 178 nautical miles away. Right, we made ourselves a takeoff. We didn't mess up, we did all right. So, we're on our way now to Ben Gurion. So, champagne and caviar is now being served because I turned off the seatbelt signs and the crew are already getting out that caviar which has been on ice. And the champagne glasses also iced and it's only the best French champagne. None of that cheap plonk, you know. We only do the best. So go on into the back, enjoy the goodies. And when we get into our uh, pattern for arrival at Ben Gurion, I'll give you a shout, okay? See you in a little bit.
Ah, there you are, Cletus. Do come back on in and take your seat. Did they give you enough to drink and to eat? Oh, I am so glad to hear that. Now, let me tell you where we are. We've had a change. We had planned to come in on runway 30, but now we have to come in on runway 26. So I've had to switch everything around. And so we're now, we've just crossed over the coastline of Israel. We are now over the land of Israel. And we're coming down and we're going to be making a right base to land on runway 26. So there you have it. So I had to do a lot of quick switching around here. But at least we do have the um, updated charts. They are now on and they are working. So I've had to change the decision height and everything else. So, and it's a busy airport too. It's a really busy airport. So I've got to watch what I'm doing. We're coming up on Hadass and we are pretty much on course. And yeah, things are not looking too bad. We've got Hadass. Rabin coming up, Sintu, then we swing around and come on to final. Wow, it was a lot of puffing and puffing to get this done, but the weather is not looking too bad over Israel at the moment, and so let's see here. There we go now. Starting to decelerate, coming around. We are on a right downwind pattern for landing. Let's hope I don't mess it up. I've had to switch all the frequencies. So everything has, it was a lot of juggling around to get this done. And I have your final course set to two five of five. Coming up on Rebin next. And 3,800 feet. Bombardier 4 X-ray Romeo November Hotel, Ben Gurion Tower, Make Straight in, Runway 26, Approach. Bombardier 4 X-ray Romeo November Hotel, Ben Gurion Tower, Make Straight in, Runway 26, Altimeter 101, Make Straight in, Runway 26, Bombardier Romeo November Hotel. Well, I've got to look out for where they are. We're making our turn onto base leg. We're now on base leg. Just crossed over Rabin, so now we're coming up to Gintu, swinging around and coming up onto base leg. Hotel, clear to land runway 26. Clear to land runway 26, Bombardier Romeo November Hotel. I 
said we're swinging round now to come on to final. And it's a right turn. Can't see the runway yet, but it's coming up now. I've got flaps 10, going to flaps 10, so we can slow down a little bit. I think I see the airport out there. the buildings of Tel Aviv. Yes, I think I can see the airport. And I have the runway inside. 2500. 2500. Check. We are now on the localizer and we are on the glide slope. We are on final to land. We are on the glide slope. I have the airport and the runway ahead going on to all lights. And the check is all right. And start switch is continuous. Altimeters are all set. Good. Auto brake is already good. Good to go. Right, we are descending and we have the runway in sight. So, right, going to gear down, flaps down. All lights are on and attendance secure for landing. Ready or not. <laughs> Well, we're on our track to come in, so everything is looking good so far. Airport is in sight. And here, Romeo, November Hotel, turn next taxiway. And going to 255. Putting in the alternate altitude, should we have to do a missed approach? Okay, everything is looking good. Ryanair 186, clear to land, runway 26, follow the aircraft on the runway. Bombardier, Romeo, November, hotel, exit runway when able. Clear to land, runway 26, Ryanair 186. We are clear to land, runway 26. Okay, let's, you want me to? You really, you really want me to? Okay, here we go then. I have control. Ah, but well, that's all worse. Bombardier Romeo November Hotel contact ground on one one eight point zero five. One one eight point zero five Bombardier Romeo November Hotel. We have two white, two red, and we're coming down the glide slope. a bit of a crosswind, little one, and there's Tel Aviv to the right. Five hundred. Five hundred, check. Four hundred. We're coming in. Three 
300. Approaching minimums, 200. Minimums. We are Light committed. Slow. and try to take the next turning to the left. Okay. Ryanair 186, exit runway when able. I will take the next one. And here we go. There's the airport. So we've managed to clear the runway Ryan nice and smoothly. Contact ground on one one eight point zero five. Okay, we'll stop here and clean up. All right. Ryan Air one eight six. Did you hear my last transmission? One one eight point zero five four. Ryan Air one eight six. Okay, and lights off. Crew is released to go to work. And all right, cleanup is complete. Now, what we need to do is we need to go down here, make a swing, go over to the apron where we can get onto Terminal 3. I checked where the other aircraft, the other flight that we're following came in and it came in on Bravo 8. If Bravo 8 is available, that's what we'll do. Here's what it looks like. See, there's Bravo 8. You can see where it's at. And we are, well, we're, our runway isn't shown on this one. But we're going to have to come down and then, yeah, we'll go to the mic two and then swing in. Or, yeah, that would be a good one. Swing in on mic two. All right. So there's the mic two. Tell me when we've got to make our turn, okay? All right. Here we go then. Give it a little. So we go across this runway, make sure nothing is coming. Whatever happens, it would be very embarrassing. going to take the Kilo taxiway there's a lot of detail in this airport my goodness me right we make the turn here this is the Kilo Ben Green Tower American Pacific 6954 ready for IFR departure runway 26 American Pacific 6954 clear for takeoff runway 26 All right we're down the Kilo taxiway and we need to go now to the Mike 2 There's the Kilo 5 There's Mike What we're looking for is Mike and there's the kilo 
four. So mic two is next. There it is, there's mic two. Stick your hand out, would you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> to go over there but before we do that let me let me show you what this looks like now there's the I've just turned off the kilo taxiway I'm at the mic 2 intersection there's the tower in the background and there's the front of the one of the piers on Terminal 3 where you can see it says Ben Gurion Airport. Now we are going to go out over there and we'll find then the Bravo 8. Okay. So here we go then and One of these will be the Bravo 8, so we need to swing to the right and then on this one, which is correct and now I need to look for the Bravo 8 off the M2 and that should be I think this one yeah that's it I can see it over there so we'll make the turn here Look at the detail, incredible detail here. Okay, coming up. And, right, we're stopped, break on. All right, and shut down lights off and all off on that switching everything off stairs and the doors are now active probes are off electrical is all off okay Right, we are here. Our self-loading cargo has now become self-offloading cargo. <laughs> right, they're all off and then I'll turn off the fuel, turn off the APU, turn off the battery and shutdown is complete. Right, Cletus, we made it. Didn't exactly make it on the runway that we wanted, but we did arrive. And the detail here is really very good. Let me, let me do some more tourist stuff here. I'm looking out at the side. Here you can see the detail, incredible detail in that um, jetway that they have. 
Look at all of that detail. And then, of course, right ahead of us, it's got Ben Gurion Airport. We landed at the proper airport this time, which I think is always a good thing. And Bravo 8, that's the stand that we're in. And looking over there is the next stand. And there's the view out to the right. The frame rate at, uh, with this, by the way, this is made by Aerosoft. Aerosoft is made, the manufacturer of the Ben Gurion Airport. Frame rate is 23, 24, not bad at all. 20, oh, and look at that, they do have kamikazes, <laughs> but too late, we're parked. So there you have it. It's a lovely airport. And it was a very pleasant flight going down over the Mediterranean until I had to make all those changes to come in to land on a runway I was not expecting. But that's the way it goes. I hope that we did you proud. Thank you for the suggestion, Cletus. Do appreciate it. So, I'll see you on another flight at Ryanair sometime in the future, I hope. And everyone else, see you all again next week. Same channel, same Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.